It's time. Episode 39 of the ATM Podcast. I'm Martin Devlin. From the platform with me, Mark Watson, international commentator, covers the Olympic Games, covers the Commonwealth Games, covers all kinds of sport radio host, and a man with much opinion about everything that is going on. Apologise to me! We've done a couple of these where I remember, before we get into anything else, where you have started by singing some warbling Anfield song at me. And now the season has concluded, What I, and you're at Bratislava on a Thursday, you're playing Europa League and the mighty United are playing Champions League. What have you got to say? You'll get knocked out before you even qualify for the round of 16. The 7-0 oh, victory this year yeah. will suddenly have some relevance again. Yeah, look, not, not good enough from Liverpool Football Club. In all seriousness, well done to Manchester United, well done to Newcastle. Uh, also on qualifying for the top four. But I thought the standout performance probably from the season really was probably Brighton qualifying for UEFA Champions League and also Luton Town getting promoted to uh, the Premier League. But also maybe the disappointment of the season, Leicester City, champions back in 2015 and suddenly relegated. So, you know, disappointing for Liverpool, but maybe in the context of Leicester City, maybe not that bad after all. Well, that's a lovely, circumspect, relaxed way of looking at it. I'm damn sure there was a little bit of anger there. Oh, just a little bit. But as I've got older, I've just learned to mellow, Martin. I've just okay. learned to mellow. That's the wonderful thing about the English Premier League is that there is just nothing guaranteed about it. And I think when you're a fan, you've got to go through the highs and the lows. But look, I think we'll bounce back next year. I think we'll be good next year um, or next season. When I say next season, what are we, about eight weeks away already? And so it'll be interesting to see the impact this season has on the likes of the Manchester Cities. You've still got a couple more weeks left, I, I think. And I said to you previously, Martin, I actually think um, it was just the hangover from trying to re- make all four agree. finals last I year agree. for Liverpool. Yeah. I just yeah. don't think there was an opportunity yeah. for a break. Totally. And I don't think we should underestimate that. So I, I wouldn't write Liverpool off next season. I think we saw enough towards the end of the season that they're still capable. And if they make the right changes and the right signings, I, I think we're back in the game. Yeah, but what we're but talking about here, mate, is we're talking about, we're talking about we're talking about something that's twelve thousand miles away which has a huge emotional impact on the both of us and I know lots of other hundreds of thousands of football fans in New Zealand too yesterday we touched base with a guy who was on the terraces at Wembley as Luton won promotion with his son with his father he had his grandfather's scarf the way he was talking about it it brought I mean honestly I was well enough listening to the sheer emotion Uh, later on in the show today we've got two Everton lads from the Toffees talking Toffees podcast and just, I'm just, again, going to tap into just how much they goddamn care about it. And this is the thing, you know, this is this is the one thing that so few sports in New Zealand tend to get. I know that, I, I believe the Warriors actually get it. Their fans are like this. I believe the Phoenix, even though smaller numbers, they get it. But we can continually bemoan the fact that rugby just doesn't seem to care about this, the most quintessential thing in sport, which is your fans and what the hell they feel. Oh, look, absolutely, and that's what I love about it. You know, I remember watching Liverpool beat Barcelona 4-0 to qualify for that Champions League final back in 2019. And, you know, they'd lost the first leg 3-0 away. And you go and watch the film for that, and you just see grown men crying. You see people hugging. You see an emotion like you cannot imagine, and you just get drawn into it too. And you're sort of sitting there, and you're going... I don't have the same connection to the city as you do. I don't have the same connection that my family, this is not something that's been passed down to me, but I've almost got a tear in my eye. In fact, watching you give me goosebumps and suddenly I am just so engaged. And as you said, I'm 12,000 miles away sitting here on the other side of the world, waking up every day to see how my team have gone. And yet, you know, um, I grew up watching rugby. I grew up watching Auckland and the great Auckland era of the 1980s and 1990s and the super rugby era. But, you know, as time's gone on, they don't care if they lose. They don't care about us anymore. And I've just lost interest. And there's just not that connection. We talk about it every week, Mark. Yeah, but I I disagree with you this week. I think that last week there's, you know, a fantastic round of games. There's going to be another meaningful round of games. And then we get into the playoffs. So finally, yeah, I mean, look, but but this this is what organically happens with the competition. It's not like New Zealand rugby have done anything to help it along. They pretty yeah, much but, ignored but, but, it. But Martin, but Martin, when it's all said and done, though, it's going to be a Crusaders Chiefs final. Oh, we know that. We, know we, that we, we knew that right at the start of the comp. Apologise to me! Let us move on to another couple of topics. Uh, I want to talk uh, about the pitch invaders and what to do with these clowns in Napier because it has become a real problem now that the Warriors faced it in Wellington, they faced it in Napier. But Ruby Tui, to start with, uh, this story probably bigger than it ever should be, but it highlights one or two things going on. 
uh, in New Zealand rugby, and, and 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 especially where the administration sit, and also with this particular player. And look, the more I think about it, mate, and I don't want to be mean or anything, I don't know Ruby Tui, I mean, I've always kind of liked her as a player, and I kind of like her image and things, but I just wonder whether or not we're seeing somebody who's just starting to think they're a bit bigger than the game itself. Oh, look, I agree. I mean, look, put this thing in context. This is the only country in the world where you can take the achievements of a minority sport in a competition where there are only really three countries that can win it and somehow make it out to be Argentina winning the FIFA Football World Cup. Um, We've said it before, I think, a lot of female athletes are really benefiting because of the political environment in this country. And I think a lot of their achievements are being blown out of proportion because, again, this is all about women being sort of suppressed for so long and 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 now they're fighting back and we talked about it you know it's what ruined the women's rugby world cup was the politicizing of it now ruby too yeah look great brilliant you did really well in that women's rugby world cup we haven't seen you play since no, we haven't really no. seen you do anything in terms of trying to now continue that and trying to build the game and trying to allow you know uh, women to yeah keep that momentum going and see the and see the numbers increase and continue to put the product out there all i've seen it's all about me 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 it's all about me 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 and that's not just that's not just her i see it with a lot of our male sportsmen as well and i think it's driven a lot by the players association but sort of wanting to come out and somehow thinking that they're firstly entitled to having wheat picks do a series on them i mean Look, they're not the All Blacks. They will never be the All Blacks. I don't care what anyone says. They will never be the All Blacks. If they had have lost that Rugby Women's Rugby World Cup, we wouldn't have been sitting there talking about the sacking of the coach. We wouldn't have been a nation mourning. We would have just woken up the next day and moved on. And I genuinely believe that. But then also suddenly saying, well, you know, I'm only going to do it if I can have a political point of view, if I can have the rainbow flag in the background. It's like, do we really... Are we really in this country where we still need to sort of push the LGBTQ, um, um, I probably got that wrong, uh, message? I, I mean, I think we've passed that. I think we're accepting of all of that in this country. And why does everything need to have a political flavour to it? You know, I, I, you, you could have somebody who's staunchly religious. Well, can they stand up there and, you know, have a crucifix or something in the background or some um, sort of symbolic religious items because they want everybody to you know, suddenly uh, become more aware of Christianity and the good Lord and all the rest of it. There are, And Chris Radu summed it up in the Herald yesterday really nicely. And sometimes I wonder whether Chris and I are just brothers to a different mother because we're, our thinking often seems to be on the same level. There are so many other means and ways in which she can still get that message across. But let's stop politicising sport all the time. Let's just get on with it. Start playing rugby, Ruby Tui. Stop holding a gun to everybody's head, OK? Just stop. Well, it's just one of those classic cases of I'm bigger than the sport. I thought that the arrogance of those comments about how, you know, I mean, if, you know, and, and, if, and, and if I'm only going to uh, put my name next to sponsors that are like this, I mean, these are your paymasters and you've got a choice. You don't have to work for New Zealand rugby, you don't have to don that jersey. Nothing that you will ever achieve in your life is anything other than because of you playing for the Black Ferns. Run off to America and play sevens rugby over there with a whole lot of schoolgirls, and you're going to find out really quickly that A, no one cares, B, no one cares, and C, no one cares. And... You know, I, I feel that there's a this, there's an athlete here who's had smoke blown up her backside and all of a sudden she started to believe her own hype and believe her own publicity. I totally agree with you on this. You know, New Zealand rugby, and, and they need a slap because this is where Mark Robinson is so ineffective as a CEO. All he has to do is come out, make a decision and be, and be, and be absolutely and utterly clear in that decision. Our teams are not political. They are apolitical. The whole thing about representing your country is you represent everyone in that country, not this minority, not that majority. You represent it all. If you can't put your own political views aside to play a team sport when there is no I in team, then you don't belong there. It's as simple as that. He just had to simply shut the door and go, this is our policy. We're apolitical. You know, otherwise, Mark, what do you get? You get the you get the glue their hands to the motorway crowd. Oh, there's a player who's into that and actually wants rail to come back, and so he's going to wear that symbol on his thing. Whereas I'm sitting there going, hang on a second, every time you interrupt the motorway, stop the roads, you cock up my working day, go get stuffed, you moron. So what do you got? You've got a whole lot of division, you've got a whole lot of divisive opinions. You know, what say there was a religious player in that Black Ferns who will never speak out because of the backlash that that woman would get who was religious and say, look, my religious beliefs don't actually align with your lifestyle. I'm happy for you to be a teammate. I love you as a teammate and everything else. 
But you're not representing me with your rainbow flag. You're representing yourself. Look, it's a really simple argument, and I just don't know why everyone gets in such a tiz about it. You're the employer. These are the employment conditions. If you don't want to abide by those, you are free, with all our best wishes, to go get another job somewhere. And if Ruby Tui leaves New Zealand rugby, guess what? Another player comes along and becomes the next Ruby Tui. That's what she's going to find out really quickly. You're 15 minutes of fame. The clock is ticking really fast here. If you don't realise that, you should. Yeah, but also just stop being selfish and self-centered. Get out and actually play the damn game, Ruby. Stop again trading one thing off against another. And we heard about the long negotiations that went on. Like, it's like, oh, we've got to try and keep her here because she's this marquee player and she's the future of the game. No, the Women's Rugby World Cup was successful because it has World Cup associated with it. And admittedly, the game against France in the World Cup final were dramatic. But now, show us your worth after that, okay? Show us first and foremost, you know, become Richie McCall. Like, I I think Richie McCaw would have a greater argument politically. I don't agree with it still, but at least Richie McCaw, I think, would have it probably, you know, people could start to go, oh, okay, Richie McCaw wants it. He's earned this. He's played 140-odd things. He's won two World Cups. He's done this and this. I think people are probably going to listen a little bit more. But, you know, it's like anything, isn't it? Okay, well, I want to be on, I, I, you know, I want to be part of the wheat bakes with kids collecting it. And can I drape myself in a Ukrainian flag? I, I mean, kids just want to collect the cards. They're not interested in the symbolism. They don't even understand most of it. They just want their player in their all black or their black ferns uniform and they want to be able to go to school and say hey have you got number 11 That's have you it. got ruby Tui? i'll That's trade it. you for trade mine you for it, i'll yeah. trade you mm-hmm. for mine yeah. rather than trying to social engineer young kids and trying to connect them to um movements that they really have no understanding of but in time as they get older as they gain life experience will gain an understanding of it and therefore can make their own choices and their own decisions apologize to me Mark, what do we do with the pitch invaders? One of the things that I found really disturbing about the whole episode over the weekend was that there aren't any arrests. There is no detaining that these people are just simply collected uh, and then, you know, held for a told off, let go, and they're outside the ground. No punishment attached to it all. And then they're free to actually show their videos on TikTok and get their one minute of fame and their silly little likes and so forth. We don't actually have a law here. But this is, again, where, you know, our government is sitting there making every kind of excuse about this. Look, when COVID came along, you just rewrote every single law that there was. You're able to do that. Why don't you just do it? First and foremost, we need labourers in the Hawks Bay to start removing silt. Every single one of you are paying the $5,000 fine back. That's $1,000 a Saturday, eight hours, and you're going to do five consecutive Saturdays on the end of a shovel. Why can't we just basically just use some common sense about this and stop it in its tracks? And the only way to stop it is to make life uncomfortable for these people people. I agree, but come on, mate. It's not their fault, mate. They weren't brought up in privilege, mate. It's not their fault. It's oh, sorry, our fault. That's right. It's and, our fault. But this, 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 this is just the rubbish that we get, though, isn't it? You know, what is the, the, the police minister coming out and saying crime's not actually any worse now than it once was? It just gets reported a lot more. And I go, well, it does get reported a lot more, but don't kid yourself. Of I, mean, it's I grew up, I never heard was. of a ram raid until three or four years ago. Didn't no, even know what one no. was, mate. I mean, stop talking no. rubbish. You know, there's absolute, just complete and oh, utter oh. misinterpretation of what the hell is going on in front of us. But anyway, well, I never used to, never, I never grew up hearing about um, gun crime either. But look, you're right. I, I mean, they do need to look at the overseas model with this. I, I, look, I think it's all occasionally when some guy gets blind and drunk and goes out and streaks. I think we can sort of deal with that occasionally. And, you know, I was even, um, you know, last week I was um, talking um, with a former All Black and he, he said, look, he didn't actually mind the odd streak at coming out. He said it was actually quite entertaining on the other occasion. In fact, it was Josh Cronfeld that said that to me. But there's a difference between that and what we saw on um, Saturday. Saturday night, but look, yeah. I, 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 at the same time though, too, and again, I just, and I know Chris touched on this again yesterday and I, I, I feel exactly the same. Why the hell are the Warriors taking a home game down there in the first place? Oh, okay, because we want to do something for the flood ravaged Hawks Bay. Well, yeah, but don't take a game down there. Do not put performance decisions ahead of those sort of commercial decisions or those feel-good stories. You know, the Warriors fans have been hanging out for a long time to have home games. You come up against a Broncos team, you're six and five, and what do you do? You go and give your home advantage away. I've got little sympathy for the Warriors losing that game on Saturday. They did it to themselves. It is dumb business. The best thing that you can do for your team and your fans is win games and win games at home. It's called the home advantage. We gave the home advantage away. You can sit there, you can blame everybody else for running on the pitch and you can look at some bad refereeing calls or whatever you want to do. No, you no, we gave weren't good the enough. home advantage We weren't good enough. Away. In the end, Brisbane 
Melbourne scored more Broncos, points. They were a better you team. looked at yeah. the Broncos and you thought, we're going to beat them because they're going to be decimated by state of origin selections. And it came back to bite us. Now we're sitting there six and six, aren't we? And we've lost a little bit of that momentum and the doubts are starting to creep back in. It was just a dumb decision from the Warriors. Oh, look, it might be nice and it might be wonderful. Uh, you know, it might be vir- virtuous and all of that other crap. But I'll say this, you never put commercial decisions ahead of performance decisions and you never put, and you never put personal decisions ahead of uh, performance decisions either. And that's where the Warriors got this wrong on the weekend. Hey, hey Martin, I know, I know there's a couple more things. Look, I, 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 and this is a week on, but I just wanted to touch quickly on that article last week just on the America's Cup. And I think it was uh, King's Council. I, um, and there was also a guy by the name of Hamish Ross and Jim Farmer, I think, were the two. Yeah, they were the ones. Yeah. Weren't happy with Team New Zealand taking a pre America's Cup regatta to Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia yeah. and sort of comparing it to the All Blacks touring South Africa and also taking the Olympics to Nazi, Nazi Germany, Germany yeah. in 1936. Yeah. And I sort of sit there and go, look, it's a bit extreme, isn't it? Here we go. Are Saudi Arabia trying to sports wash the world? Probably. Yes. But again, this whole political politicizing of it but how people just pick and choose and the easy target of Saudi Arabia we've got an all whites team that are going to play Qatar in June is there going to be any discussion around that did these same two people sit down and watch the PGA championship did they sit down there and go hang on a minute the guys that are winning this play on the live tour I'm not going to watch that I'm not going to watch that how dare I those guys are basically you know, the, yeah, the, the, promoting the Saudi Saudi Arabia become, and the Saudi yeah, they have basically fun, yeah. gone up to sign up and become Nazis, or you know, basically signed up to become um, you know white South Africans pro apartheid. I mean, it, it's just. It's just absolutely... Well, I hope that most people that read these stories look at them and actually have the same reaction you did and that I did. It's just clickbait crap is what it is. And that's that's all it is. You know, I saw the list of questions that Stuff had put to Grant Dalton. He he's actually sent me the list of questions that they'd sent him and the thing about Nazi Germany. I just guffawed when I saw it and I said... Who is the idiot? Who, who's put their name to this? I mean, why don't you, and I've talked about this in the last couple of weeks, why don't you hassle Lydia Ko when she plays there? I mean, yeah, every time absolutely. that we actually go to China and our teams play, I mean, look, the list is endless. It's just rubbish. It is The hypocrisy is just boring is what it is, Mark, and we're not wasting any more breath on it. I want to I want to talk about a text, finally, that you sent me about your beloved Blues, and you said that they're better off with a certain player, and I cannot believe these words are going to come out of your mouth. Oh look, I think the Blues are a better team without um, w- without Bowden Barrett in it. I, I think oh, more but control, God, more say, how can you say that? Like, how can you I'll sensibly be... say that? Well, look at the damn result, Martin. What part do you need, mate? Tell me when Bowden Barrett's been good. Tell me when Bowden Barrett has led this Blues team around. He was a better player when he was playing for the Hurricanes. He's yesterday's man. He hasn't played well for two years. I mean, seriously, Bryce team at second five eight looked magnificent on the weekend, and whether you like it or not. They were a better side without Bowden Barrett. You just got to you just got to be in your bonnet, and you've got a lingering prejudice no, about this, and you need to get over it, mate. The guy's a world well, club. Tell, you, He's oh, still oh, going to okay, be as part of that you, all black backline at the World John, Cup. John Walker was world class once, mate. Sebastian Coe, Steve Ovet. Uh, look, to be fair, I, I, I thought uh, Harry Plummer played bloody well at first five eight over the weekend. Oh, Harry Plummer, he doesn't have the brand. Hey, he might not have the number of uh, Facebook likes, or he might not have the same number of um, Twitter followers and and whatever other social media that you've got to have these days to make the All Blacks or to make a team. But it, it's it's not about that. He can't. He can't. Um, execute a game plan, Bowden Barrett. He's scared of taking it to the line. That Blues team has just looked stagnant. I like the idea of Zahn Sullivan at fullback. I'm a big believer in Stephen Pierafetta. I think there's room in it for this side. But look, you've seen when he's not playing, this Blues team is better. Why would you change it? Why would you bring him back at this week when you actually for the first time saw that Blues back line start to fire? It's just madness, mate. It's absolute and utter madness. We will win. We will lose the Rugby World Cup if we think Bowden Barrett's going to lead this All Black team around. Show me in the last two years how Bowden Barrett has been part of this All Black success, Martin. You've got a man crush on this guy. You've actually got to evolve, Martin. You've actually got to move on, Martin. Okay? I, I don't know. What have you had coffee with this guy? Devlin. Have you seen my wiener? The platform.